Good morning, friends, disciples, and devotees. Here are some thoughts on the current crisis. Today, a host of day lilies opened, displaying a beauty that takes one's breath away. In Mother's garden, each day brings a new surprise a vision indicating something of how the new world will look when the greed and power lust of man no longer despoils the earth. I listen to the music of the birds, the winds, the waters of the lake, and in the silence pray that truth may manifest before it is too late and a great cataclysm befalls the earth. As I see the hawk effortlessly planing high above and see the newborn fledglings break from their nest in their first flight, I vow that my life should be given to Lord Sri Aurobindo, who has created all and achieved all for us, and the mother, who is working to transform our human bodies into divine bodies, free of all illnesses and strong to live without fear of death. We are now in one of those critical phases with what is being called coronavirus 19, which is another attempt of the forces of evil to subdue the spirit of man and wreak havoc on the soul of humanity. It will go as all the forces of evil eventually go, by succumbing to a higher force that descends and obliterates them. Still, they do considerable damage, as man has done to our beloved planet of which Sri Aurobindo has written to change this earthly life to life divine. And he and the mother have given their lives to bring down a new force, the supermental, that as it continues to grow in strength, will begin to purify the lakes and streams, the rivers and oceans, and the lands we have poisoned. Time is no factor here. And though we may not be seeing the results immediately, to the keen observer eye, it is clear that a sea change of the likes we have never known before is upon us. There is little we can do if we do not open to this force and surrender ourselves to the divine presence. If we can do this, then small groups will be formed throughout the world and they will have the power of change. Each of us is asked to offer all we are and all we can be looking not back to the checkered past with its ample darkness, but to the light of the future, which has descended in the universe at the present time. No sacrifice is too great for any person to help in the manifestation. Mother has written, men, Countries, continents, the choice is imperative, truth or the abyss. In closing, I would like to share two quotations from Sri Aurobindo that have uplifted and sustained me through the most challenging periods of my life. The first is from the synthesis of yoga. 
all that is, is he. And he is the more than all that is. And we ourselves, though we know it not, are being of his being, force of his force, conscious with a consciousness derived from his. Even our mortal existence is made out of his substance. And there is an immortal within us that is a spark of the light and bliss that are forever. No matter whether by knowledge, works, love, or any other means, to become aware of this truth of our being, to realize it, to make it effective here or elsewhere, is the object of all yoga. And this one from The Life Divine by Sri Aurobindo. The ascent to the divine life is the human journey, the work of works, the acceptable sacrifice. This alone is man's real business in the world and the justification of his existence without which he would be only an insect crawling among other ephemeral insects on a speck of surface mud and water, which has managed to form itself amid the appalling immensities of the physical universe. And in closing, I would like to share a poem, which I rarely do written in 2014. The title is The Terror Faction. Darkness forces in the world prevail, and men to violence their souls align, to falsehood knowing not that they will fail. Of imminent defeat we see no sign, Embracing evil, they rush to fill their role, to counter the truth now rising from the earth. When will we meet each other, soul to soul? Acknowledge the truth that all are blessed from birth. These enmities we hold from ages past, symbols of a deeply twisted will, to subjugate the brother foe at last, and gloating hatred's eager coffers fill. No end can yet be seen of human hate. The eternal doors have opened to a few, and all the gods and angels on us wait to guide our lives, remake the world anew. But fewer hear the call and answer give. By love we shall survive, in love must live. Namaste all.